In the interest of full disclosure, I have paid the slinger bag with my own funds. This is not a sponsored video. All the opinions in this review are my own. I have bought the slinger bag basic model with no additional accessories. I'll talk about three different aspects of the slinger bag, its portability, its usability, and its overall value. Slinger bag's portability strength. It's designed to be carried like a luggage. This is probably slinger bag's biggest strength and best selling point. I can easily move this ball machine anywhere by simply pulling it like a luggage. It's a lot lighter than many of the luggages I've carried to the airport. With this design, it's very easy for me to move the slinger bag from the car to the tennis court and move it from different areas of the tennis court itself. Slinger bag's portability weakness. It's large and bulky. Depending on the size of your trunk of your car, you may have to empty out many items from your trunk to fit the slinger bag in. Also, due to the size and possibly amount of balls you have in it, the machine can get heavy. Personally, I wouldn't say lifting slinger bag in and out of my trunk is difficult, but it can be cumbersome. It does have handles on the top and bottom to make lifting more manageable. Slinger bag's usability strength. I can practice all my strokes. This includes ground strokes, approach shots, volleys, and even overheads. It's what a ball machine is supposed to do, and it does its job well. You just have to play around with the settings and adjust the positioning of the slinger bag on the court. This will take some time initially to figure out, but once you know how to set it and where to put it, you can practice all your strokes with this machine. Slinger bag's usability weaknesses, and it does have a few. Number one, there is no underspin. If you're a person that wants to practice hitting against a slice, you're in no luck. Number two, slinger bag generates some heavy topspin almost always. There's no real way to tone it down other than to adjust the speed. Number three, sometimes the last one or two balls will get left in the machine without launching them out. And number four, the biggest weakness is probably the time it takes for the machine to launch a ball again after you hit the on button on the remote. It may take up to 24 seconds for the machine to launch the ball again. I'm not sure why it takes this long, but it shouldn't. It's almost as if you're rebooting a computer. Overall value. At $550, you get the slinger bag and the remote. The oscillator will cost you an extra $125 but for me, I don't need an oscillator for a personal ball machine. I can practice tennis movement or alternating strokes in many different ways on a non-oscillating ball machine. Compared to other ball machines in the market, $550 is a great deal. The only question mark I have is its durability. As a coach, I've worked with the Playmate ball machines, which can cost thousands of dollars. These machines are built like tanks and can take a lot of abuse. They've been pummeled by thousands of tennis balls over the years. Many dead and wet tennis balls have become trapped in them and they still work. Can slimmer bag take such an abuse? I doubt it and I don't want to test its durability this way. I'll need to be more careful and be delicate in how I handle slimmer bag. But will it still work after two or three years of constant use? Will dirt or leaves get trapped in the machine causing it to malfunction? Will the battery still work? These are questions only time will tell. If it starts to break, I'll definitely update this review. Slinger bag does have its weaknesses as I mentioned. The 24 second delay is my biggest gripe. None of the weaknesses though are deal breakers. As long as I'm able to practice all my shots and get a good workout, Slinger bag will always be a welcome tennis partner. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TopspinAdrian and check out some of my other videos. See you next time.